I give you a lot of homework when um, somebody shuffles loose this mortal coil. Christ, yes. Like, immediately, they're like, hi, here's 50 pieces of homework. And, and if you get any of them wrong, yeah. you have to go back to the P. I, I had to go to, to uh, probate court because it's like, okay, I've got to redeclare this. So they had to sit down with me, had to get an appointment. I had to re-sign these things. I had to initial the changes and all this bull. Nine. And probate court's like 20 minutes away and all this bull. I am, uh, I am in temporarily without any health insurance because I didn't fill out the paperwork to get my Cobra fast enough because, you know, I had some stuff going on. Because uh. they're like, oh, we're so sorry. Um, if you could just fill out these 72 forms. I don't know if that's just an American thing. It feels kind of like it's an American it is, thing. It is entirely an American thing. But it sucks and I don't like it. Yeah, it, it is entirely oh. exclusively an American thing. Valkyrie just came in here and like threw a mouse down. Like, yeah, you show that mouse, little girl. <sighs> now she's sitting there, she's picking up with her paw and gnawing on it. Are you just showing off? It's too bad the internet can't see you. <laughs> well, this is very week... entertaining hearing me narrate what the cat is doing, I'm sure. This week, I have, we've got, oh my, the last story this week. Like, if you're watching this on YouTube, sit through the whole thing. Trust me. Um, this, this is the feel-good tale of the year. I, I cannot wait for the movie adaptation. It's that good. Disney's going to have to, to make one of this. With animated singing things, I promise you. Um... Like, I mean, they, they, they did that one about the Day of the Dead. They can pull this one off. Anyway. Um, and all that and more. And th there's also some horrifying things this week, too. So it's a cornucopia. Let's get started. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs. Bring back a whole lot of horrible stuff. Something we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And um, we're, we're going to kick off this. This is one of those, a series of weird serendipity, synchronicity kind of events. Okay. Like, it's, it's, you think someone's making this shit up. If someone was writing this, they'd never get it past an editor. It's one of those kind of fucking things. So, but it's one, it really happened, and you're sitting there like, Inflatable rat stabbed at stab funeral. Home. Oh, come on, damn it! Stab funeral homes. See, windows are being being shut. Fuck you. Fuck you. Computer. Fuck you. Um, funeral home employee arrested for damaging property during union protest. Okay. And I want to stress there was no funeral going on during the protest because they 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 specifically say that we're not those kind of assholes, but. A 15-foot-tall rat met its demise in front of a Springfield funeral home Monday. It started when a group of union roofers were protesting outside Stop Funeral Homes. They objected to the long-time Springfield business using non-union labor. Okay. As part of the protest, they inflated a giant rat, which is intended to call public attention to companies employing non-union labor. Um, a woman came out of the funeral home angry. She came out running hollering and screaming and had a knife that was maybe four, six, or seven inches long. I don't know what she was screaming, but she was screaming, and she stabbed the rat eight times in the back. So, stabbed, stab, a giant inflatable rat in front of a funeral home. What is happening here? The Ides of March, as put on by the Muppets. Lawrence. Lawrence Staub, a funeral home director, 31, is charged with criminal damage to property. She is the daughter of Paul John Staub, the second funeral home owner who was named on the banner accompanying the inflatable rat. Um, what? 
What the fuck happened? <sighs> okay, look, I have never personally been protested for things because, well, I'm not that important. But if I were, I, I, I would, you know, I would expect that to deal with that kind of protest in a way that doesn't involve knives. I'm just saying. They must make it better. Yeah, they don't. They really don't. This bladed. It's, it's, it's <laughs> the only thing worse at calming down an angry crowd than a knife is a gun. Yeah. 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 And we we have a whole lot of both here in America. Can you just imagine how sur just imagine being in the moment, just how surreal everything going on is. This feels like uh, like a fucking NBC sitcom, like a fucking episode of the fucking office. Say, this seems like something up from the office. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. This is a fucking office. Like it's a little dark for Parks and Rec, but it feels like the office is kind of vibe. Yeah, it does. What the hell? <laughs> I mean, at least they could lay the rat to rest. It came to the right place. All right, next up, we, we've covered stories like this multiple times. Just in the same general vibe of, look, your ex isn't worth it. That needs to be one of our, our, our taglines on this. Your, one of the rules is your ex is not fucking worth jail. Just plain and simple. But at least if you're going to do something jail worthy, fucking get the address right. Woman intent on revenge set fire to wrong house. North Carolina woman apparently seeking revenge on her ex-boyfriend tried to set fire to a house owned by someone else. That'll show him. <laughs> Rowan County Sheriff's Office said in a report that a homeowner in Gold Hills was awakened Friday by a woman who saw uh, by a neighbor who saw a woman trying to set fire to the house. There were bundles of wood and a fire on the front porch. The deputies found a jug of oil they say was used to start the fire. As the homeowner went to get a garden hose, he saw burning pieces of wood around a propane tank. So that's a bomb. Um, the garden hose. You can blow that motherfucker up. The garden hose didn't work because apparently the woman had used a sealant to block the flow of water. Oh, this was not a crime of passion. No. This was a multi-step plan. Well, it gets worse. The homeowner grabbed a rifle and confronted the woman who's holding one of his dogs on a leash. When law enforcement and emergency personnel approaching, the woman drove off. Deputy Sylvester Woman in charge her with first degree felony arson, assault with a deputy weapon, larceny of an animal. Bond was set as $100,000. Oh. What? What? She didn't run his dog, did she? I don't know. But that's it's not even your ex's dog. It's just some. And by that point, you have to know it's not your ex. Also, who. This is a weird one for me, because, like, how have you been in a relationship long enough to be that mad about it, but also not know where they, he lives? Like, did you just, like, wait a few months and just get all worked up about that shit and then finally? Yeah. yeah the, what the Christ? I mean, clearly this person is violent and scary, so maybe the ex was hiding. Probably moved. In addresses, yeah. Because this is someone who did not did not give a fuck because they were out in the open on the, they built a little bomb with a bomb. They built a fucking bomb on their front porch and put like sealant in the. And let the well, neighbors see her do it. And she'll get in court and be like, I don't know, I just blacked out. No, you didn't. No, you, no, you didn't. Because you went to Home Depot and bought sealant and propane. Fucking Christ. Grayleigh says, fellas, she's single. <laughs> yes, she is. 
couple of people have asked me about dating and I'm like, mm, I think I'm in my spinster era. I got a bunch of cats. I'm, I, I think, I think I'm good. Cause. Oof. Like I. <sighs> And I'm trying to and like trying to run from the cops at that point. That that's the point. You've done all this stuff with no regard for protecting yourself, and then finally, last minute, like, oh, maybe I should go. Yeah, I will bet money she brought her own car. <laughs> all right. Next up. Um, speaking of trying to get away from the cops, uh, this never works, and it keeps happening. And I'm pretty sure all you do when this happens is you make anyone trying to catch you sigh very deeply. Reckless driver tries to escape San Rafael police by diving into canal. Oh. They say they arrested a man who was driving recklessly and tried to escape them by diving into a nearby canal. They said they received reports of a Nissan Pathfinder driving recklessly in a parking lot. When officers arrived at the scene, they located the registered owner of the vehicle and realized he had an outstanding felony warrant. So what the fuck were you doing in the first place? I can't hear you. Limit? You can't hear me? It's, yeah, it's, it's the, the uh, auto volume ducking thing. Oh, okay. If you, have, if you have a felony warrant, you need to drive the fucking speed limit. Yeah. And use your blinker. Yeah. You, you, you need to act like you have like seven tons of cocaine in the trunk at all times. That's you, you don't. But uh, when officers arrived, uh, they attempt as they attempted to catch him. He allegedly fled from officers, stole a paddleboard and jumped into the nearby canal. Good plan. You're swimming in a canal, which for one thing, only goes two ways. For being the cleanest. No, it's probably bodies that's, of water. That's you're 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 coming home with something magical in your bloodstream. Um you're not getting superpowers from it either. Canals only go two ways. They're not like a lake, they're not like a body of water connected to anything else. Once you're in that canal, all they have to do is just, like, follow you on the bank and wait. Yeah. It's just, like, they just leisurely walk down the bank, watching your ass. Look at your watch. Are we going to jump in after him? Fuck no. <laughs> I mean, all you've done is given them a, some time to jumpstart the paperwork. Yeah, it's just, like. He'll come out when he gets tired. He'll come back when he's good and hungry. <laughs> so my dad always used to say, oh, he couldn't find one of the cats. He'll come out when she's good and hungry. It never works. Never, ever works. Going from land to water to escape the cops. When you're own It's not like you have a speedboat here. It works because of a fucking fugitive. Yeah, well, you like, know... Oh, I'll get the scent off me. That that doesn't actually. That doesn't work. Yeah. And also, if they're looking at you when you do it. Yeah, it's it's not. Unless you unless have... you're fucking Aquaman and you can hold your breath for a year and a half. I I don't know what you think you're doing. Are you Michael Phelps? No. Right. Then stop it. Because they can wait the whole 30 okay. seconds it takes for you to need to come up for air. <sighs> All right. So I don't think anyone in the next story is really covered in glory here. However, someone is kind of on the worse end of it. And I don't know if they thought their plan through because this could have been much worse than it was. The best idea. Missouri man facing charges for allegedly shooting a plane in Caldwell County. 62 year old. Well, I didn't know there was a website called Ozarksfirst.com. 
A 62-year-old man in Missouri is facing multiple charges and could face felony charges following an incident involving an airplane being shot at July 10th. Caldwell County Sheriff's Office reports Donald V. Bates Jr. of Kidder, Missouri, was taken into custody following a search warrant. Bates is currently being held at the Caldwell County Jail on charges of attempted second-degree murder, first-degree assault, armed criminal action, unlawful use of a weapon, and first-degree property, uh, first property damage. Well, I didn't know there was a way to use a weapon unlawfully in Missouri. <laughs> That's encouraging, actually. I was like... Did, did you use it? Th- were you holding it by the barrel and hitting people with it? Right. That's like, like, did you use it wrong? Because I have been to fucking nowhere, Missouri. That is where my mother-in-law lives. Yeah. Purple scary in that country. According to court records on July 10th, in an attempt to frighten the pilot of a crop duster flying near his home, Bates admitted he walked outside of his home where the crop duster pilot could see him while he was piloting his aircraft. They say he raised both of his arms wide open while raising his middle finger toward the pilot. Okay, you have to understand, when someone is up flying and you're raising your middle finger, that's like, that's like, you're like on an Atari 2600. You're like four bits. That's like a pixel. They can't really make that out. Ugh. Bates also admitted he had a 12-gauge shotgun visible in his right hand while confronting the pilot. Bates believed the pilot was flying too low near his property and just wanted him to stop. Bates Bates claimed he never aimed the shotgun toward the pilot, never had his finger on the trigger. Um, Pilot said he could see Bates on the right side of him as he flew overhead. And states, after seeing Bates at the gun, he decided to go to a different farm a few miles away to avoid further conflict and fear for his life. Um, Once he landed his plane following the inspection, found fuel linking from the right wing through a bullet hole in the fuel tank on the underside. Pilot then found another bullet hole in the nose cone. My finger wasn't on the trigger. His finger on the trigger. Did you just will those bullets into existence? Uh-huh. Eugene Gray? Actually, you Gambit? Actually, probably Miracle Man. I mean, not the Molecule Man, actually. Maybe the Beyonder, but. Yeah, mo- mo- kind of molecule. But uh, Jesus, all right. Look, I can understand somebody. You're out there. You're concerned about somebody flying their shit too low near your house. Okay, sure. But they have a number on the plane, and the FAA loves looking into shit like this. They have fun doing it. You call them. You're like. Hey, this motherfucker's flying way too fucking low. He's in my. Uh, they'll have a. They'll have a party with it. You don't get a gun. You could have literally blown the fucker up in midair. Or worse comes to worse, you could have shot something vital enough that the plane just said, "Nope." And then you'll have the FAA on your property anyway because they'll be cleaning up the fucking. The blown up. Yeah. Just, I'm getting weird, like, Independence Day vibes off this one. Right? Well, considering what happened to Randy fuck, what's his fuck? Um, I can't Randy remember. Quaid. Yeah, considering what happened to Randy fucking Quaid. Seems right. Yeah, seems fucking right. He's actually. You ever think about what Christmas is like at the Quaid house? Just because he looks like Santa doesn't mean he is. Well, no, because like Dennis Quaid is his brother. If I'm yeah, not mistaken. yeah. And he seems pretty chill. He seems like a good dude. Yeah. Then Dennis Quaid's kid is on the boys now. Yeah. And he seems pretty all right. Yeah. So, like, do you think they just sit there like, is, is Uncle Randy coming this year? <laughs> <laughs> or is it going to be a nice Christmas? No, this is one of those cases of not thinking things through. This no. could have been so bad. Yeah. I, I, and not just because of, like, the illegal part. No. It's it could have, like, killed everybody. Yeah, this could have just, like, it, why the fuck would... Don't. It was just a shock. It's a gun. What? Look, once the bullets go away from the... They don't magically disappear if they don't hit something immediately. No shit keeps going. Even if you even if you hadn't hit the fucking plane, 
You're firing projectiles. They're going to come down somewhere. You, in fact, turn around and come back down. Yeah. I am a little confused why the plane didn't blow up, because he shot the fuel tank. <laughs> and as movies have taught us, if you even shoot the fender, a vehicle blows up. You shoot the wing of a plane, it blows up. See, in all seriousness, I thought if, if you hit if you hit the engine, there's a chance you can blow it the fuck up. The wing, the, the fuel tank, no, folks. In, in case you didn't understand, shooting the fuel tank doesn't do anything but put a hole in the fuel tank. It's that's not how gas works. Not what Wolverine Origins told me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that movie. Of all the movies to reference, why? Why fucking that one? Jesus Christ. That movie. The one where they sewed Ryan Reynolds' mouth shut. What the fuck? I mean, not that part. But I like two-thirds of that movie. All right. We're 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 coming up on the end. We have two stories to go. And the next one's going to be gonna be rough. I'm going to tell you just conceptually. But stay with it for the last one. I promise you. But this one is... is this one's a little rough. Um, there's a lot of things you can learn to do on YouTube at home. Lots of them. I have learned to do a whole bunch of shit on YouTube that's helped me out tremendously. A whole lot of the amplifier work and stuff I've done. YouTube, great information. Um, This is... One of the things that's not good to learn on YouTube is self-surgery. <laughs> a Brazilian man ended up at the emergency room last week after attempting to perform rhinoplasty on himself using YouTube tutorials and super glue. Like necessary surgery. Um, you can find all sorts of DIY tu tutorials on YouTube these days, and apparently that includes no surgery. YouTube was a mistake. Fortunately, one Sao Paulo man actually tried to do his own rhinoplasty using a YouTube video as a guide, ended up at the emergency care unit with an infected wound. Man told doctors he did not use any gloves to perform the procedure and did not clean the wound as not to open his stitches. Oh. And his name was not been revealed, told doctors the nose, throat, and ears department he got the idea to do his own neurosurgery on YouTube and that he used rubbing alcohol to disinfect the area and veterinary anesthetic to numb the pain. After he was done operating, quote unquote, he used self absorbing thread and super glue to close the wound. All right. Look, I will admit, because I'm an American, there have been moments where I'm like, do I really need to go to the doctor with this? Because, um, like, I've had... I went to art school. I closed a lot of exacto blade wounds with rubber cement and super glue. Yep. I did. Was it smart? Fuck no. Well, I wouldn't do that to my face. No. Well, I mean, the, the super glue, it's, it's sterile. It's not going to kill any. I mean, as long as you disinfect it and take care of it. But that's not like I'm going to make myself a new nose. Like, what the fucking fuck? What the fuck? Uh, yeah, and, and I, I have this is not the original website. I did confirm this. It's just the hospital press release is in um, Spanish, and I had to use Google Translate, and it came out kind of badly. But yeah, it's this, this, yeah. Patient was discharged from the hospital the same day, and this should be referred to a referred for a return visit. Would be surgeon showed up at the hospital on July 21st. This case was only disclosed to the media yesterday. I was shining a spotlight on the so on the so-called quote home rhinoplasty videos. We teach people how to make their noses smaller or thinner. That's not a thing that should exist. No. Like, okay, YouTube. Well, do you know how much you can do with makeup now? Just look up videos on fucking contouring. YouTube. Get it, contour stick. YouTube loses its goddamn mind if I use 10 seconds of a song. But apparently if I got on here and taught people how to cut their own noses open, I'd be fine. Or if we use naughty language in the first three minutes. Oh, yeah. But no, if we were yeah, just yeah. like, here, just take a steak knife. Or yeah, I'll get demonetized for the word fuck in the early, in the opening of the, of the video. But, you know, if I'm telling people how to cut, yeah. You just, just. I also kind of want to know if he did a good job. 
Well, considering shit's infected, no. But like overall, well, once it's not infected anymore, will he have a cuter nose? I, I think he's probably going to have to go back and get it. What he, his fit? He's going to have to go back and get his nose job. Nose job. Or will he have a giant hole in his face? Like, because I don't know if you guys know this. You can live without a nose. There used to be a woman that went to my church who had to have her no her entire nose removed, and she just had two nostril holes in her face and a band aid. Like you can look like Voldemort and live. What? Why do you, why do you have a story for fucking everything? <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean. It, I will use YouTube for learning stuff where it's like, okay, if I fuck this up, I just have to take it to a repair guy and they'll sort it out. It'll cost me a little money. Looking up how to modify t-shirts at 3 a.m. Because I was like, I will have t-shirts that, like this that are a little boring. And like, what if I just cut some holes in it? Not cutting holes in my face. All right. If I fuck up, all I lose is a t-shirt. So y'all have, have cringed through that one. Now I'm going to tell you, of all the stories on the show we've covered, this is one of the best. This is definitely the best one this year. Ladies and gentlemen and non-binary pals, I, I implore you, all rise. We stand a legend. This grandma's dying wish was a giant dick on her grave. The grave of 99-year-old Katerina Urduana Perez is now topped with a huge penis and testicles weighing nearly 600 pounds. Yes, there is a picture. I like that it's even pink. It, it. Before her the death. picture of the guy, I assume he's moving it. <laughs> it's not a flattering picture. Before her death, 99-year-old Katerina Orduana Perez had one final wish, a giant statue of a dick on top of her grave. Finally unveiled the completed monument, a five-and-a-half-foot tall cock and balls weighing nearly 600 pounds, mounted on her tomb at a cemetery in Mexico this past week as, quote, recognition of her love and joy for life. And there it is, folks. That, that is her grave right there. That, that 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 is i i that's that's the tomb there's yeah there it is there there it is um uh she always said in the mexican sense we were vergas there are a few words in mexican slang as dynamic as verga which uh is perhaps best translated in english as quote cock to his general use as profanity depending on how it's phrased verga can be a brutal insult telling someone to go fuck themselves or that they're not worth shit. Or it can be a compliment, a badge of honor, that if someone is a verga, it's cool or badass. I, I'm learning something today. So apparently she, she kind of took that to heart. And has made, has made the, the 600 pound penis the family, like, I, I guess. Look, they're fucking unveiling it. They've got they've got a fucking red here they go. The unveiling ceremony. Unsheath the cock. This fighting into battle in Game of Thrones with their banner. <laughs> it's a dick. The giant dick. <laughs> fucking legend. Hello! Yay! It's a penis. In fact, it was delayed. Oh God, it, it was delayed. For a bit because uh the people they they hired to uh construct the penis couldn't get the balls quite right so they had to take it back in and get the get those testicles just so and they called Challenge. it they called a local sometimes, engine sometimes you really gotta grab those balls and just 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 squeeze them around until they're right you know until they do what you want. They call local engineer in town who builds plastic products like water tanks and children's play sets and asked if he was up to the task. At first, I thought it was a joke. Said uh, Isidro uh, Lavonnette, 
the uh, engineer behind the statue because it's so it's not very common to see those kind of sculptures on monuments, and even less so in the memory of someone who's deceased. It took nearly a month with a, a team of 12 people, including a carpenter, a sander, a sculptor, a carver, a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker to build the statue. And a partridge <laughs> in a pear tree. They got particularly delayed on the ball sack because the first attempt was, quote, disfigured. They had to start the process over again of, quote, melting materials to give it the necessary amplitude so the testicles could be formed. I love this lady. I love her. I mean, you don't want a floppy ball sack. Nobody wants that. Like, when they talk big dick energy. I want to know, is the marbling on purpose? Because, <laughs> like, the shaft is pink. <clears throat> yeah. But then the balls are kind of pink and gray marble. That, that can't happen. Actually, the, the colors can get a little, yeah. Is that is that the artistic rendering of blue balls? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish this was my grandma. I love her. I love her too. This is this is beautiful. Ten out of ten. No notes. I I cannot. You, you the legend. The, What's great is that looks like a pretty big mausoleum, so I bet that's like a family plot. And everybody has to go there now. And you know like that everybody gets buried there. There's like part of the family was like, yeah, let's put a dick on grandma's grave. And the other part was like, hold on, what? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't. Do I get a vote in this? Nope. Will. Oh, uh, um, shit. Honestly, if you get to 99 years old, you get whatever the fuck you want. Go ahead. Have fun. Yeah. I, I love her. I love just like I read this. I was so happy. I'm just I, I, I love her. They had an unveiling. They had to get like an entire team. They got a fucking team. <laughs> Helps the local economy. I need to talk to you about the penis project. <laughs> See, I thought we were working up to the Kentucky Noah's Ark. Oh, that was, yeah, you mentioned that one briefly. Uh, if you, in case you didn't know that uh, there is a amusement park in giant quotation marks that in Kentucky, that is a real biblical experience. And they built a gigantic ark, like as in Noah's Ark, as in the fictional fucking ark. Did I Nothing mention more it? fun for taking the kids out than to and, uh, reenact getting killed in a flood by and, the wrath of God. And then Kentucky had a bunch of fucking floods. And guess what? The Ark was damaged in the flood. And they're suing their insurance company. Because the it got damaged. The Ark didn't have flood. The Ark didn't have flood damage. Look, when God made that covenant, and I assume they thought they wouldn't need it. Well, when God made that covenant not to flood the world uh, again, I'm pretty sure he had a little asterisk for dumbasses in there. But I'm sure they were like, "Our Jesus will protect our ark." The fuck he will. He's got better shit to do. I don't know if you've seen like the everything lately. Yeah. They're busy. He's he, it goes straight to voicemail. You call Jesus these days. He, he doesn't even they get do back to you. They do not have the time. Oh, so uh, this week, what did we learn this week? Um, that there is a grave in Mexico City that's going to be the most popular. People are going to there make pilgrimages to the penis. There's like the big giant Jesus in Rio. <laughs> And the big giant dick. Okay, now you know you how there's actually a smaller Statue of Liberty in France that faces ours? They look at each other. <laughs> well, now you have, have me thinking, wait a minute, the giant Jesus is the five foot dick to scale. Hmm. Is this like one of those chocolate peanut butter I mean, situations? historically, do we know how well endowed Jesus was? We don't. We don't. I, I, that, that's, let's not. 
break open that particular Ark of the Covenant, shall we? Um, <clears throat> we've we, we've learned this week that um, self surgery at home, sh- like, are are you in like what was that movie? Uh, twenty three hour, twenty seven hours, or whatever the fuck that movie was. What the fuck was that? Called? Oh, with James Franco. Yeah, with the, with the. If you're in that situation, self surgery kind of makes sense. If you just want to like you know thin down your nostrils. Maybe go see a professional. It's not what we call an immediate need. I know it's expensive. Right. But you know what else is expensive? Reconstructive surgery. Yeah. Um, We've learned that yet again, when you shoot the bullet up, it come down somewhere. That is. Aren't, what do you call them? Guns are not a remote control for life. They're not a remote control for life. I mean, yes, you may make the plane go away, just not in the way you intended. Yeah. And there will be consequences. Oh, yes. Like, first, it's like first degree attempted, second degree shit. Like, you're, oh, you're in trouble, motherfucker. Plus the yeah. FAA. I mean, you hear that there is improper use of a firearm in Missouri. <laughs> oh, we've learned that trying to escape from the police... By diving into a body of water never works. Try to escape via paddle board. <laughs> you weren't even going to swim. We've learned that, it, you know, sometimes your exes are bad to you. You just got to let that shit go and move on. Yep. Arson does not help the situation. You know what does? Therapy. Yeah. Also, maybe get the address fucking right, you fucking lunatic. Anytime you're thinking about arson, think about therapy instead. I think that's a good rule to live by. Hug it out with somebody. I mean, you're right, but I don't want you to be. Um, And we learned that sometimes... This confluence of weird shit can happen where you're stabbing a rat in front of the Stab funeral home and you're going to jail for it. What the shit? Did, like, did you so wake well, up? How did I get here? And you may tell yourself, this is not my inflatable rat. 